What's going on everybody? Happy Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't even know what day we've got here. Let's take a quick look. Today is the 11th. It's Wednesday. I've got a Freightliner Cascadia 2019 with 785,000 miles. Customer states, we've got an engine noise. So first thing I want to do before I try to start it up now, we did have to start it because we had to move it. Uh, I don't have any fault codes. Interesting. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do just a quick compression test just to get a general idea. Sorry, I'm in the wrong screen and I apologize for the glare, but we gonna have to deal with it for now. So anyway, let's go ahead and go here. You know what I really want to do really quick just to get a good idea is I want to go to the EGR side. And okay, so it looks like we don't have a delete, which is good. Hold on. Okay, so Sorry about that. I had to pause because I had a truck going by with the fan clutch. So what I'm going to do really quick is again, I don't have any fault codes. Uh, looks like the DPF zone is at zero, which hopefully that means we don't have a delete. And the very next thing I want to do really quick is just do a compression test. Actually, let's just fire it up and let's see what the hell this thing sounds like. So bear with me here. Sounds like a bad valve. Exhaust leak. bad at all guys so we definitely definitely have an exhaust leak or an intake leak uh, I'm gonna do a quick compression test to see possibly which cylinder is bad I can definitely see some exhaust signs of exhaust here which again leads me down the path that there is a intake exhaust manifold now these are six individual ones right one two three four five six it looks like I've got a bad one over there in order to get to that this has to come out. This has to come out. All the fuel lines have to come out. Well, yeah, fuel lines are going to have to come out. And the bad side, or the bad thing about that, in addition to all the bullshit here, this uh, these fuel lines are on a national back order with zero ETA. They've been gone for about three to six months with no lead time. So, yeah, I got to proceed with caution when it comes to this thing here. Let's take a look at the other side. Come on. All right, guys, on the exhaust side, actually not bad at all. I don't see any signs of exhaust leaks or anything like that. That's a good sign. Again, I don't believe this is deleted, so I'm not going to dig any deeper when it comes to that bullshit. Uh, all right, let's walk on over. Let's do a quick compression. To our valves is misbehaving. So again, you're going to go to your actions. You want to go to your relative compression test. You're going to wait a few seconds. Click on run test, click on yes, because you are accepting the cautions and whatnot. Here we go, let's crank it and let's see what we have. All right guys, I'm not gonna lie, that sounds bad. That sounds like shit. I think we definitely got an issue going on with one of the valves. And, oh, look at that. So, cylinder one, cylinder two, three, four, five, and six. So right now, four and six are definitely bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the engine to TDC one or TDC six. I'm gonna take a look underneath the valve cover. Okay, so we're gonna pull all this garbage off. You don't have to take this off. Uh, just again, proceed with caution because you have those coolant lines back there. We're gonna take this off, take this off, put everything on TDC, and then I'm gonna go ahead and check the valve adjustments. Um, and start from there. So if I can get a good valve adjustment, I'll do a compression test again and then verify my results. So what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm just gonna print this up. Oh, fuck, I, I didn't print it up. Anyway, let's do another compression test really quick. Hold on. Compression test, once per cycle. So let's cycle the key really quick and I'll be right back. All right, back. guys, so I cycled the key. I gotta let everything connect and do what it's gonna do. Relative compression test. We're gonna click on run test, click on yes. Make sure nobody's out there, gotta get their hands and things. Anyway, so let's go ahead and crank it up and then we're gonna go ahead and print the results. This way I can compare my first versus my post, you know, again, after the adjustment. So let's try it again. All right, 
right, guys, let's take a quick look again. And the results aren't gonna change. Look at that, zero and zero. So what I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna print it. Come on, baby. Print. Ah, fuck, come on. All right, so we're gonna print it up. I gotta let this engine cool off. We're gonna put everything TDC. And again, we're gonna do compression test, which we just, just did. We're gonna do a valve adjustment and then I'm gonna do a compression test again to compare and see if that makes a difference, okay? And then the last thing I gotta do once I get the customer's approval is we're gonna have to see about getting that intake um, exhaust or that intake leak taken care of on, the, on that stuff. But again, it does require some work to go along with it. So that being said, Let's start doing it and uh, I'll keep you guys posted. All right guys, so we have the valve cover off. I'm not gonna do the adjustment yet. I just wanna show you something. Engine is just a little too warm. It's a little about 100, a little over 100 degrees. So I'm gonna wait until it cools down a lot more uh, and then I'll feel comfortable doing the valve adjustment. So again, I'm not in a rush to do the valve adjustment. The truck's here. So for TDC one, we're gonna adjust valves one, two, and four. Okay, that's what the book calls for. Again, it's a little warm, but I just wanna show you something really quick. Again, I'm not gonna do the adjustment. I just wanna show you what's going on here. Okay, so again, one, two, three, four. So I just wanna show you what number four is. Okay, look at that. I got no side to side, I got no up and down, I got nothing. So this valve is tight. This shit ain't going anywhere, guys. So that's number four. Um, see, that's actually good. That's what you wanna hear. You wanna hear the up and down chatter, right? Up and down, up and down, look at that. One and two. So one, two, so far sounds good. Number four is very tight. And again, this one is the one that had zero compression. So once this thing cools off, I'm gonna adjust the valves on the intake side. I'm gonna double check the exhaust side just to be sure. Rotate it 360 degrees, and then I'm gonna continue with TDC number two. So stay tuned and I'll show you guys what we find. By the way, say hi to Chavo. Chavo, saludos a YouTube. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's, uh, let's, let's check this thing out and we'll go from there. I'll keep you all posted. All right, guys, we're back. I still can't do the valve adjustment yet because the temperature is about 91 degrees. Uh, I personally like it to be a lot cooler, uh, maybe somewhere in the 60, 50 ballpark. Again, just because I wanna make sure my valve adjustments are, uh, are on point basically as much as they can be. So right now what I did is, is I just kind of uh, set everything up for tomorrow. So I'm gonna continue this video first thing in the morning. And again, we're gonna adjust intake valves. So on TDC one or first rotation, you're gonna be at one, two, four okay now keep in mind number four was the one that had zero compression and number six so we'll figure out number six a little bit later or first thing tomorrow morning and again what i wanted to show you guys what i wanted to show you guys was again i have no i got no left and right movement and i got no up and down movement so that tells me this is completely out of adjustment uh or just adjusted incorrectly so either way we're going to pay a lot of attention to number four and then number six so right now this is what it should sound like Okay, I'm gonna put a filler gauge in now. Again, I haven't adjusted it. I just wanna do this for the sake of the video. And let's see if we can go ahead and get that in there one hand while I'm filming. All right, so there you go. A little tight. So me personally, I like to make this a little, a little looser, a little more play. Uh, and again, same thing on the exhaust side. But I'm, again, I wanna let this cool off, but I wanted to show you that just as a comparison. So number one, number two, and then number four, again, I have, zero zero left to right and i have definitely have no chatter going up and down so this is telling me this is completely out of adjustment so what i'm going to do is grab my number 17 i'm going to loosen the lock nut or the jam nut okay and let me grab my number six where are we at here here we go guys i don't know if you can see that or the camera's going to show it but there we go so we're gonna back that off as much as we can. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the, there we go. So I'm gonna loosen up the jam nut and then we're gonna do the adjustments. And then you're gonna see, look at that. I can feel it, you won't be able to see it there. So now at that point, okay, obviously that's an exaggeration, but you get the idea. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it cool off a little bit more. I'm gonna make my adjustments. I'm gonna do my compression test um, and go from there. But again, I'm gonna do my adjustments on TDC one, one, two, four, first turn, and then rotate it TDC six, and then I'll be doing the other ones that I did not mark. So again, I'm just gonna be doing cylinders one, two, four 
on the intake, then I'm gonna do one, three, five on the exhaust. Okay guys, we are back. So we went ahead and rotated the engine. We are now gonna be at TDC six or second turn, whatever you wanna call it, however you wanna call it. So right now what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at number three on the intake, number five, and then number six. And again, you know that we had number four and number six that were pretty much junk compression. So we're gonna check those first. Uh, we already did four, again, on the first rotation. So now we're gonna do number six. And again, look at that. Nothing left right. Here goes number five. That's pretty tight too. That's pretty shitty. Number three. Okay, that's good. So adjust everything evenly. Let's check it all out. Again, these are completely out of adjustment. I'll, however, number six was definitely the worst one. Number, I'm sorry, number four and number six. Uh, let's check out the exhaust side. Actually, it sounds pretty good. I'll, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put a filler gauge in there just to be sure, just to be on the safe side. I'm gonna make my adjustments. I'm gonna cover this up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and crank over and do the compression test so we can compare everything and go from there. All right, guys, so we have everything put on the top as far as the valve cover goes. We secured our coolant manifold pass through, whatever they call it now. And I'm going to go ahead and connect the computer, perform a compression test, see if it made a difference, start it up and do a compression test again and compare those numbers with the first set of numbers. So stand by, let's see, what, let's see if uh, we have some good results. We are back, we are connected. Let's see what the results are. So we're gonna launch our diagnostic link software from Detroit and again, let's see what it says. We're gonna do a quick little compression test I'm gonna fire it up after that let it run Just just let it uh, kind of either balance out or smoothen out or whatever it's gonna do I'll shut it down. I'll do another compression test and I'm just gonna go ahead and compare those and hopefully we have an improvement if we do great um, I know we should because they were at zero if we don't then that obviously means we may have an issue in the cylinder head Okay, I don't think we have an issue in the pistons or the engine side because again, there's no blow by. Doesn't mean we don't, but that's you know generally a pretty good indicator. So let's go ahead and launch our software. Let's get these little windows out of the way. It takes a minute to uh, for the system or so that the system can connect. You're gonna see all the little green lights on the left. Right now it's just yellow, which means it's just communicating. So while it does that, I have to stand by and wait a little bit. All right, so. All right, looks like we're good. So far, so good. Let's just double check, make sure our codes are inactive. So we still have axle temperature rear, uh, short to ground, short to ground. That could be a plug or that could be a sensor itself. But again, not gonna worry about that yet. Next thing's next. We're gonna go relative compression test. Wait a few seconds. It's going to tell you run test. Click on that. Caution, make sure you read that. Click on yes, and here we go. Ready, we're gonna crank it. It's not going to start. Just hold down the key until it's done on its own. Sounds better than before. Let's click on okay, and let's see what the results are. Bam, look at that, guys. 100%, 96.5, 96.5. And again, remember, these were the two uh, zero compression numbers. 82, which is good. I still want it to be a little bit higher, which means we may have an issue in the cylinder head itself. Uh, but for now, that's a really good number. 98%, which I think last time was probably around the same thing. And then 92, that was at zero, went to 92. That I like a lot. So what I'm gonna do right now is I am just gonna go ahead and start the truck and go from there. So I'm gonna go to my instrumentation. This is the way I like to do it. Um, and I go over to where it says mechanical. And the mechanical is going to show me your oil pressure and that's really what i care about the most especially with a truck that's not that i'm not familiar with here at my shop so let's crank it up oil pressure should go up to about 50 maybe 60 psi there we go beautiful i love that very nice let's walk around the truck and tell me what you think of the sound Definitely not the same sound as it was before, but pretty good nonetheless. I do like that. Uh, service routines, let me just crank up the RPMs a little bit, see what the hell's going on. 
I'm going to do it using the computer. Sounds really good to me. I do like the way this thing sounds so far. Okay, doesn't mean there isn't any damage, but a valve adjustment seemed to really help the situation a lot. If the problem comes back where the compression drops, more than likely that cylinder head's gonna have to come out and put a new cylinder head back in. So, really quick, I'm just gonna do a quick little manual cutout test. I'm gonna do it one by one. Okay guys, so just did a quick little cutout test on the injectors. It's nothing major, it's just something I like to do. Again, I'm just trying to get the engine to work a little bit. I'm gonna turn it off right now. I'm gonna cycle the key, I'm gonna wait a few seconds, then I'm gonna turn the key back on, and I'm gonna do another compression test again just to see what's going on. Okay, see if we have a better number than those last two that we saw, uh, I think it was at 82 and like 92 or something like that on the number six. So. We're gonna check those out right now. Let me cycle the key back on. And we're gonna go back into our actions tab. We're gonna to go to the relative compression test. Uh, give it a few seconds to until this goes green. And then once it does, there we go. Compression test. We're gonna do that one more time. Wait until you get the okay right there where it says compression or run test, sorry. Click on yes. And we're going to go ahead and crank it again. It will not start, but we're going to look at these two numbers, the number four and the number six. Here goes. <laughs> Click on OK, and you should get the results. All right, not bad. Not bad at all. Went from 82 to 83 and a half, so that's pretty good. Again, it's not, you know, in this ballpark here but compared to the zero we were at and then the 80 we were at earlier, now we're at 83 point or 82, whatever the hell it was, 83.5, that's pretty good. So I think a valve adjustment did help the situation. Your best bet is to get this truck on the road and then uh, actually see what, what's gonna hurt or see, what's gonna, see what it's gonna do. So for now, that's pretty good. We're gonna go over to this side, say what's up to Pops. <laughs> Okay, and uh, last thing I need to do is make sure I get the go ahead or the authorization from the customer to replace the intake manifold gaskets. Again, there are six of them. The dumbest part about this design is all this shit has to come out in order to get to those uh, intake manifold gaskets. For example, this needs to come out. Your oil coolant module needs to come out. In order for that module to come out, this pipe needs to come out. This, this pipe needs to come out. Uh, the fuel lines at the top of the rail do not need to come out. However, the lines back here that go from the high pressure pump up to the rail, those do need to come out okay, in order to get that clearance that we have there. Uh, I don't think I need to take this module out, so I think that'll save us a lot of time. Uh, again, downside is those lines, okay, these two little lines that are coming from the top down to the bottom, those are still on a national back order with zero ETA. So good job there, Detroit. Uh, other than that, let's find out what the customer wants to do, we'll go from there. Guys, if you enjoy the video, if this video helps you guys out, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, please subscribe. Uh, got a little bit of a coolant leak here, it looks like, and that's very common, sorry. Coolant leak here, and that's very common with this uh, this type of shitty clamp. I like using a regular clamp, something like that one right up there. But again, you can take that out, put another clamp on there, and that'll resolve that issue. But anyway, guys, have yourself a great day. I hope this video helps you guys out.